see everybody and my PowerPoint at the same time. Let's see how that works. Okay, if not, Pam's here for my, she's my technical support person, so she might speak up and pause me if I'm missing anything fun. Oh, there you guys are. Can you see? All right, here we go. So, welcome. We're glad you're here, and the need is great. Um, I somebody mentioned they saw our um, a couple of news stories that we have going on, and so I just wanted to share um, one of our a, a quick little clip about the news story in case you haven't seen it. Um, featured in this particular news story is Miss Annette from Annette's Tender Loving Child Care. Miss Annette's been in the field for 20 years. Um, I don't know if she speaks a little bit about her journey. She started out um, as a mom and um, just felt the need um, to to put out their quality childcare because she was having a challenge finding some place for him to go. And she's just done amazing things in the community there in Holly Hill. And you're also get to meet our CEO, DJ Lebo, and she's going to talk a little bit about some opportunities we have. So. Um, I've been practicing this. Let's see how it works. Um, I have to pull up. It's going to pull up the internet, hopefully. And then just patience as it gets started. And I'll make it bigger for you all to see. <laughs> New at four, the Early Learning Coalition in Volusia and Flagler County says it is seeing a major shortage of preschool and early learning teachers. It's to the point educators estimate more than a thousand children are on waiting lists stuck at home because there are just not enough teachers for the classes. News 6's Molly Reed explains what they're doing to combat this. It's early learning centers and daycares like this one in Holly Hill that say they have room for kids, have a long wait list, but just don't have the teachers to be able to bring any more kids in. I have 26 in row, but not all the children are here because I don't have teachers here. Annette Pelham owns Annette's Tender Loving Daycare. She says she has a wait list and has to turn away kids that are already enrolled because she can't hire teachers for them. We have a real, real problem because we can't recruit teachers and when we get them in sometimes this is not what they want to do. The Early Learning Coalition of Flagler and Volusia is working to get results and combat the shortage. CEO DJ Lebo estimates there's more than 1,500 children under the age of five on wait lists between the two counties, whether it's for daycare, preschool, VPK, or an early learning center. She says they were fully staffed before the pandemic, but many left. Hiding pay jobs, and they've just chosen to leave the profession or not enter the profession. To curb that, the coalition applied for an almost nine hundred thousand dollar grant to create incentives to hire over 100 teachers as long as the school agrees to pay a minimum of twelve dollars an hour the coalition will provide a five hundred dollar bonus and will pay and provide all education and certifications needed for the teacher then it gives them free materials because as we see even in the public school teacher often are paying for their own materials lebo says this shortage will have a lasting effects on the children out of school especially when they enter kindergarten without the skills from early learning. Children's brains being built in those first five years are critical for the success of that child long term. And those interested can apply just by visiting the Early Learning Coalition of Flagler and Volusia's website. In Holly Hill, Volusia County, I'm Molly Reed getting results, New 6. Here in Big Green Egg Country, you all right. So as you can hear, there's some exciting opportunities. You're you're um, coming on board at just a great opportune time. Um, so we're going to learn a, bit, a little bit more tonight about the grant funding to provide um, some extra terrific benefits to you. And we're going to learn a little bit more about why this field is so important to our children, our families, and our community. Okay, so what is early learning? I keep saying that term, early learning, early learning education, um, early learning teachers. So NACI, the National Association for the Education of Young Children, it's this big organization that devotes all of their time and attention um, to early learning. 
And early learning is actually defined from birth to age eight, which um, to put a little perspective on that, that's um, up to um, grade three, actually. Um, so what, what, what you focus on mostly is birth to age five uh, in our early learning centers. They do have school age programs um, that take care of children when they're done with elementary school. Um, but our focus and support is into that birth to age five age group. And as you can see on the screen there, um, the members of our profession care for and promote the learning development and well-being of children. Um, and we want to establish a foundation for lifelong learning and success. You're going to hear me say that a lot, brain building, foundation building. Um, the work that we do in the early learning field is it's just the foundation for everything um, all the way up to their brains are fully developed at age 25. Um, some fun facts that the brain is 90% developed by the time a child is age four. Um, they've done some brain scans. Science, neuroscience has um, brought, shed a lot of positive light to how important the early learning field is. And they did a brain scan of a five-year-old next to a 25-year-old and the brain synapses, all of those great, that's science, I love science here. Those synapses were all um, similar from age five to, to age 25. So all of those interactions in that birth to age five are, are so important. It's literally laying the foundation um, for that child's um, adulthood. And, you know, 40 hour work week for parents, that means those children are in the care of our child care providers, teachers, um, hopefully like you all. Um, so you can see how important it is that those children are getting um, the most optimal care that we can provide for them. Um, you might hear it called daycare. Uh, that's uh, even though a lot of our providers, it's even within their names. Um, it's not taboo, so to speak, but we're trying to promote professionalism in our field. Um, so we we really are trying to embrace the term child care. Um, but you might hear it called child care, daycare, preschool, um, all of those terms. It's all the same. It's all early learning. Um, and there's different settings actually. So there are um let's see if i can show it there yeah so there's even different settings um, that we can provide care or you can teach in so there's the family home child care that's typically um a one person if it's a large family there might be two caregivers um that are that offer care in, a, in their home and they are licensed through the state and they do get um all the same supports that if they contract with us um, they get all the same supports that our, our regular child care facilities get. Um, it's just a little bit different environment for some children. There are private child care settings. They might be a small facility like Miss Annette, or they might be a larger facility. Some You might think of it as like a traditional child care setting. Um, and then there are some franchise child cares, and they're just a facility that's under a corporate umbrella. They might have some standards they ha have to meet by their um, their corporate people, um, as well as us. And then there's religious child care. So facilities under a church umbrella. If you attend a church on Sunday, perhaps your your church might have a preschool attached to it. And I just wanted to point that out because, um, you know, there might be a different environment that works better for you than a, another one. So, so, you know, there's just a plethora of different settings that might work and, um, you might just want to consider one thing over another. So when you go on our job posting portal, um, just kind of keep that in mind when you're perusing what's out there. All right. And so did you know, I love these fun facts. Again, this goes back to um, some studies, um, 25 year studies even, if you do a, a, a little Google search on it, um, they started following children um, 25 years ago and, and uh, um, that attended a quality child care and followed them through the years and did some follow up questionnaires and whatnot with them to see how they were faring in, in their life. And there was two, um, two prominent studies that happened and I'm sure there was other little ones along the way as well. And then I mentioned also the neuroscience um, that's 
backing the proof behind these statements that children who attend quality early education programs are less likely to repeat grades, need special education, or get into trouble with the law. Um, they have better test performance on reading and math test scores. Um, they say by the grade three, um, that's seen. Um, and then there's a greater likelihood of being enrolled in college or having a skilled job or both. Like these are facts that are verifiable um, by these studies that happened. So again, foundation layers, like what an amazing job to know that that child that you have in your classroom, um, you're impacting if they're going off to college or becoming, you know, the next doctor that solves cancer. Um, it's 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 almost a little mind boggling, but it's so exciting to think at this age, um, what a difference that you can make. And, and, and just another fun fact, children who attend high quality education programs are less likely to cost taxpayers money for health, educational and public assistance services. So you're impacting a child, um, but you're also impacting our community as a whole. So if we can get these children to be uh, productive members of our community, um, we don't need all of those extra supports um, for teen parenting or you know, drug addiction or mental health issues, all of that. It starts, it starts here in the early learning field. So how cool is that? Any questions so far? I, I, I'm talking quick, I'm sure. Are we good to go? Okay, let's get to some of the good stuff. So, um, well, that's all great stuff. However, um, what DJ talked about in the, um, the video clip in the beginning of the news story. So we were awarded this grant um, and it just came at the best time because we do have a, a teaching shortage out there. And um, I'm sure you can see all of the um, help wanted signs wherever you go. And I think part of that, um, our theory, part of that is that because there's waiting lists for these childcare facilities, we need you to come be a teacher in the field so that these parents can go to work. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's a huge benefit right there is, is giving back to the economy, giving back to these families so the parents can go to work and support um, their children. And so with this grant, um, we really want to be supportive um, as we draw new people into the field. You know, it's, it's, a different, it's a different world we live in here in early learning. So we want to make sure that you're set up for success. And so there are some um, depart Department of Children and Families, that's the, um, the alphabet you see there of DCF. Um, they do require some training hours, and that's a great thing because we want to make sure um, that you have the basics down, right? Rules and regulations, safety factors. Um, those are the kinds of things those um, required training hours cover. Um, and that's just a, um, the first step in setting you up for success and why they're mandated. Um, because we want you to go into the classroom having at least those basic knowledge of um, working with children are. Um, so we're going to help pay for those um, required training hours. We also have CPR and first aid class set up for everybody. Um, Miss Mary is with the Ormond Beach um, Fire Rescue. She's a hoot. Um, so I'm super excited to be partnering with her in the community um, to get that CPR and first aid uh, class done for you all. And then you're going to get support from one of us, an Early Learning Coalition specialist. Um, right now, you get me. Um, but as we, as you spread the word, because as you become a teacher and see how amazing it is, and you're going to tell your friends and your family members, and they're going to want to be teachers, um, we're going to pull our team into it, and um, you'll get support from them. And by support, what I mean is um, just a touch point person outside of the school. You know, the directors are super busy as well. They wear many, many hats, and their job is to be there to support you. Um, but just until we get um, staffing up and and um, more support for those directors with with teachers into their 
into their schools. Um, we're also going to offer some support from a specialist outside of your school. So it could be um, coming in and just sitting in your classroom and offering a little like whisper coaching, like, hey, try to say your, your words like this to the child and see how that makes a difference. Or even just, uh, oh my gosh, it was a crazy, crazy, crazy day and I just need to talk it out with somebody. Um, we can be that for you as well. And then after six months with a positive performance review, staying at the same school, you'll earn a $500 bonus and then $1,200 worth of classroom materials, which Kiki will tell you is amazing. Um, and it's good stuff. I'm, I'm super excited. I've been out of the classroom for a few years and I still like to open the packages and put my hands on all of the materials too. And Pam's going to drop all of that information, um, the web, the links at the end. You'll see this slide again at the end. We'll delve into it even a little bit more if we need to. Um, I just wanted to mention it at this point. All right, I'm going to move on to the next. If there's no questions, Pam, does it look like everybody is with us still? OK, awesome. All right, so I told you this is interactive, um, so get ready because we learn through play when we're in preschool. It's intentional play. So I have a little um, activity for us to do when I click over to the next slide. Um, I was told to actually turn off my, my camera um, to help with the buffering of the video. So I am going to do that. If you would feel more comfortable turning off your video while you um, do the brain game with us, you're more than welcome to. If you don't mind leaving your video on or if you just simply want to watch um it's just a quick little um minute thing so i'm actually going to turn off my video and click to the next slide and um fingers crossed that the the sound and all of that is working so here we go now we're going to work on our mental health with a focus activity called pinky thumb. What you're gonna do is open your hands up like this, make sure your palms are facing you, close them into fist. We're gonna put one thumb out on one hand, one pinky out on the other. And when I count to three, we're gonna switch. One, two, three, switch. Let's try again. One, two, three, switch. Now, some of you at home may be wondering, wow, this is more challenging than I expected. But guess what? Our brain loves challenges. And I wanna break down what's happening in our brain as to why this activity is sort of challenging. So everybody put your fists like this, put them close together. This is about the size of your brain. And the way your brain works is that one half of your brain controls the opposite side of your body, which means the other half controls the other side. When we do two different things at the same time on each side of our body, we're working both halves of our brain. Our brain loves this. So that's why we incorporate these exercises. These are called neuroplasticity exercises. So let's try it one more time, but we'll break it down. Thumb out, pinky out, thumb in, pinky in. Thumb out, pinky out, thumb in, pinky in. As we get better, we'll go back to both out, both in, both out, both in, both out, both in, both out, both in. Great job. Keep practicing. Don't give up. I promise you'll get better and better as you keep going. So how was that for you? <laughs> So much fun, right? And all those great science words, neuroplasticity and all of that. You get to do that with children, right? How exciting is that? Um, yes, yeah, so the, the and I always mess up what it, their title is, but the Center of the Developing Child of Harvard University. So they say that in the first five years of life, more than one million new neural connections are formed every second. So. Um, we're going to learn about that and I have another video for you and it's better for them to explain the science than me, but you'll see why I'm excited. So you'll learn about the little neurons um, connecting and all of that. So 1 million new neural connections in the first five years of life. Now let's revisit that whole parents have to work 40 hours a week 
um, the children are in the child care in your classroom um, for majority of those hours, right? So that's you interacting with the child and making all of those um, connections happening. And so there's simple and functional connections that form first. We all know this, you know, if you've been around a baby, first the vision and hearing, and then our language skills. And then of course, those more complex connections where um, the prefrontal cortex um, all of those decision makings and problem solving skills and all of that um, you're going to start seeing um, with the children as you get into the third or three year olds, four year olds and five year old classrooms. Um, so you get to watch all of that happen. How amazing. So as an early learning teacher, you get to be a huge part of making all of those connections. So um, thanks for your patience with one more video. It's it's. I'm going to let that speak a little bit more. Now, here we go. Hopefully you can hear it. By the time a human embryo is five weeks old, it is just the size of an apple seed. But the brain has already begun to grow. By eight weeks, the basic structure of the brain and central nervous system are in place. The neural networks are spreading out, and even now the nerve signals are traveling more than 150 miles an hour. At birth, nearly all 100 billion neurons of the human brain are already in place. But the brain only weighs about 25% of what it will later on. It's about to embark on its fastest growing period quadrupling in size by the time a child finishes preschool. By age six, the brain is 90% of its adult size. During that burst of growth, 700 new neural connections are formed every second as we gain the capacity to smile around two months, to talk usually around a year, and to dress ourselves around the age of three. In those early years, in fact throughout our lives, the brain changes through experience, learning to speak, taking those first steps, understanding colors and shapes, forming novel thoughts. But as certain neurons are used more frequently, other unused neurons go away. It's a process called pruning. And almost anything can shape us in those baby and toddler years. First words. First ice cream, first TV show, first argument, for better or worse. So yeah, I mean, how important is an early learning teacher in the life of a child, right? Um, so what did you hear in the video? What stood out to you? Again, you're interacting, right? If you would like to um, find your little chat feature and just type in an, a quick little answer for me, it could just be a couple of words, a little phrase, but I'd love to hear from you. Um, what did you hear in this video that stood out to you? Why do you think brain building and early learning are so important? Um, why do you think this job opportunity is so important? Um, any of those answers, anything that's standing out to you right now, rolling around in your mind, I'd love to hear from you. And I'll give you just a quick minute um, to think about it and give your answer out. So we might have a little bit of quiet right now as you're, as you're thinking and sending your answers. If anybody would prefer to unmute and answer instead of typing, I would love to hear from you as well. See some answers coming. This is awesome.
give everybody about 30 more seconds, then I'm going to start reading some of our answers. And if anybody wants to unmute and chat about it, we can do that. All right, Miss Angel said the brain is growing quickly and through the first few years. It's amazing, I think. I think amazing, the human body. Um, early educators are so essential. They are constantly learning new things, and you get to be part of that. Yeah, that stood out to me too. Age six, a child's brain is 90% developed. And then the pruning. And what they mean by pruning is if they're not using those skills, um, they're going to lose them. So if we, we want to make sure that they're in a quality um, care setting, they're with teachers that understand the importance of developing those language skills and problem solving skills because we want those connections to stay strong, right? Awesome. I'll just give another quick 30 seconds and then we're going to move on and we'll get to meet Miss Casey. All right, if anybody else's answer comes up, we'll make sure we, we go back and revisit that. All right, thanks, thanks for joining in and sharing your thoughts. I appreciate that. All right. So we are going to hear from an actual live teacher in our early learning community. Um, she's a very important brain builder that has made a huge impact on many children and family lives right here in our community, um, as well as a huge impact on me. So I'm super glad that she could join us tonight. Um, I'm Ms. Kiki has joined the early learning field as a high schooler, so a little commonality there between us. Um, she actually graduated from Spruce Creek in 2002. I'd say go Hawks, however, I am a faithful Cuda fan. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> oh. and, and so we're, um, she took advantage of the WeHop program at Spruce Creek High School, and actually many of our high schools um, in the area still have similar programs or still have um, opportunities for high schoolers to get into the early learning field early. So if you know of a teenager that um, is, is looking for a life path, and you might want to refer them um, that in that direction. And actually with some of the work that I'm doing in my new role, I, I will be connecting with a lot of those um, high schools in the fall and um, supporting them in their support of their high schoolers. So I'm excited about that new journey. Um, so upon graduation, Miss Kiki went right into the field and she's developed her wings and has been flying high for the last 18 years. Can you believe that Miss Kiki? 18 years, I did the math. Um, she's worked with all care levels, infants to school agers, and she's now going to be leaving the classroom after all this time. I'm so proud of her um, to support teachers and directors in her new role as a compliance spe specialist with um, Mid Florida Community Services, which is um, Head, Head Start. They have a division of Head Start right here in Volusia County. Um, I'm going to embarrass her. She shared some fun facts I can't wait to share with you. Her high school superlative was most likely to break out in dance, which I can see. Um, her dream vacation is to go to Bora Bora, and she better bring me with her when she goes. And her favorite place to be is the beach. And I'm sure that is with her kiddos. She's also an amazing mom to four beautiful children. I don't know how she does it, but she does it all. And she continues to challenge herself and plans on using that teach scholarship that we're going to talk about. I mentioned to somebody earlier, um, once you get hired on with a DCF licensed childcare facility, you automatically qualify for a scholarship um, through the state of Florida called teach and it'll help pay for your education, whether you're interested in just starting out getting a certificate um, for early learning all the way up through your PhD excuse me, your PhD. So that's pretty amazing. There's not many fields that can boast that. Um, and she's going to work on her master's degree in early childhood development education eventually. So welcome, Ms. Kiki. You got to unmute. There you go. Hi. Hello. How are you guys doing? 
How are you guys doing? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good. Great, great. So I just want to share with you a little, you know, a little about my history and, you know, what keeps me here in child care because um, I really love it, to be honest. I really, really love it. So as Erica said, I, I started in high school. I actually graduated in 2004. <laughs> it's okay. I started in 2002. Um, it was a two-year program. Um, with Miss Minky, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Spruce Creek, but Miss Minky was my was my teacher, and um, she was absolutely amazing. I mean, she gave us hands on everything. I mean, the little kids that came in, that most of them were like teachers' kids. They came in, they were so sweet, and we just, I mean, you you automatically fell in love. You automatically fell in love, and you know, through her guidance, like she was the most gentle spoken woman i mean she helped us through navigate through our program like it was no other um and then after that i went to a program called project warm um but project uh, project warm is with elc not elc <laughs> easter seals they were contracted with easter seals and what ended up happening was um after i left there I end up going to Easter Seals on Dunn Avenue. And you know, I I tend to take away some, not really take away, but like absorb and gain some knowledge from every person I meet. And along the way, I mean, when I tell you I've worked with some phenomenal teachers, I mean, phenomenal teachers, directors. Um, I've had the you know, like I, I had like my last teacher when I was at Easter Seals, they called us a dynamic duo. Um, the teacher I'm with now, they call us a dynamic duo. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's it's been amazing. It's been amazing. I think one of the things that keep me um, in child care is when you get to see the aha moments. When when they actually when you're trying to keep, teach a concept and it's like, aha, and they they build from that. You know, I had one little boy. I was like, we're going to build a bridge. That's all I said. <laughs> we're going to build a bridge. And from there, he was building skyscrapers. And I mean, he was like, this is the castle where the princess is. And I mean, he just it just went on and I'm just there, you know, like, where can I put my block? You know, and he's taking over. He's going, you know, and to see his brain going and, you know, he's he's telling me that it needs a roof and he makes a triangle. And I'm just like, it was amazing. It's amazing. I mean, that's just one story. I mean, I have a million of them, <laughs> but I mean, you get to you get to experience those moments. And um, I'm not going to say it's always going to be great. You have some you have some days where, you know, it's a little challenging, but that's where the support comes in. Um, one thing that I can say is um, conscious discipline has helped a lot when it comes to redirecting behaviors. Um, yeah, I mean, just the the concept of teaching the kids that, you know, we are family within the classroom. You know, they they come in, they're they're happy, they're joyous, everyone's meeting them at the door. I mean, we we have a greeter and they're, you know, they're greeting them, you know, like, hey, good morning, welcome in. I love those moments. I really love those moments. And you see little like during our circle time, well, we call it group, large group time, you get the because they're so used to the routine, you get the little, the little, the little helpers that say, Oh, I want to sing this song. And they start singing the song. You let them take over and they start singing the song. And, you know, they go, they they do it. They they may come along with their own little variation. They're like, you jump up and down. No, it's now it's your turn. Yeah, you turn around. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's great. It's great to, you know, to experience those moments with them. It really is. Awesome. Thank you, Miss Casey. Um thank you. We're so glad you're here. And if you think of anything um, before we get off, please unmute and jump in and share too. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it, it, it is, it's, it's, um, it's 
life changing for yourself, even, right? It is. It, is. it definitely is. I'm, to be honest, um, I've developed a lot of patience over the years. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, I, I was already a patient person, but I'm I developed a lot of patience because you know, some kids you have to give them, you when you say something to them, you have to give them thirty seconds to respond. So you know, within those thirty seconds, you're you're waiting for them to respond, and some some they'll respond quicker than others, but you know, you develop those patience and you go along your day and you're like, hey, it's time to do what, or you know, what's next, and you re you really become patient and that's what our our little ones really need they need that patience so awesome especially as they're brain building <laughs> absolutely um anybody have any questions for miss kiki you can always use the chat if you don't want to unmute and join in and again, if you think of something before we get off, or if you think of something, I'm a slow processor. Pam will attest to that. I'm a slow processor, so sometimes I need a minute to digest everything I've heard. Um, and so you're more than welcome to always reach out afterwards as well. All right, it was great hearing from you, Ms. Kiki. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So um, how do you get started? What's next? So. You got to hear what an amazing um, experience being an early learning teacher could be, um, how important it is, how impactful it is, not just to the children um, and to their families, but also to our community and even to yourself, um, how much it'll help you grow as a person as well. Um, so what's next? Um, so we have this wonderful job portal on our webpage, elcsc.org. Um, I think it's ECE Jobs. Pam can pop that into the, the chat and I'm gonna do follow-up emails with all of the links as well. Um, you can also Google search, go onto our webpage and poke around. There's a lot of great things um, on our webpage. Um, that link below is to our professional development webpage. Um, some of that is, um, for current teachers that are, um, you know, like there's BPK teacher information. So BPK is that voluntary pre-kindergarten. It's state funded um, opportunities for all children to get prepared um, for kindergarten. So it's uh, 180 hours worth of um, free education for all of the children in the state of Florida. So that's what BPK means. And a lot of that happens in a lot of our child care centers. So if you you if that's something that interests you there, you'll see some BPK teacher jobs available on there. There's some requirements behind that. Um, so it might not be this first year. You might just be um, supporting a lead teacher in a BPK, in a BPK classroom to learn um, how to do that. Um, but if, if you're interested in working with the older children, that might be a route you want to take. Um, maybe infants, babies are your passion and, and you want to love on babies all day. There are um, many infant and toddler uh, teacher opportunities on that web portal as well. Um, so that would be the next step. So that would be applying for one of the jobs on our portal. And um, when you go in for your interview, letting that um, that director know that you attended our webinar, that you're interested in um, that opportunity to be a teacher recruit is what we're calling this opportunity and they will register you with us and um, we'll get the ball rolling from there with a support plan and all of that great stuff. And again, those are some of the benefits we're offering those um, required training hours that every teacher coming into the early learning field has to have. Um, you have to start within 90 days and you have a year to finish, but with our supports in place, um, we're encouraging you to get that done within the first 30 days um, because then, you know, once you're hooked in, you might want to start pursuing your um, certificate program or even get rolling in um, the associate's degree program at Daytona State or Flagler Tech. Um, so, and we have that CPR class that's rolling every month so that we can get you going with that and um, schedule your first meeting with me as um, your support person. 
And then of course, um, making sure that you're successful those first six months so you can get that $500 bonus and $1,200 worth of classroom materials. Um, again, it's, um, you know, the base pay, it, it may be $12 to $15 an hour. And, you know, everybody's like, well, I could go here for this much money. You sure could. Um, however, you know, you might have to work nights, weekends, holidays. Um, you're going to have to deal with some cranky people out there. Uh, here in the early learning field, guess what? You get to love on and interact and intentionally play with children all day. You get um, a support system. You get some amazing colleagues that really do become your family because you are doing such important work um, with these children and supporting families. Um, you learn to lean on one another. Uh, so, you know, there's that support piece and you grow your school family, which is, is so amazing to have too. Um, you might not get in a different field. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's all of the great benefits. Does anybody have any questions about the benefits or, or how to get rolling or anything like that? Anything that spoke to you that you're just, maybe you just had your own aha moment that you're excited to share with, with everybody here? I have a question. This is, um, I think my camera is off. Um, what I understood is, say if I don't want to get hired quite yet, but I you know, want to reach out and um, to one of these job opportunities to explain that the first 90 days I have to initiate the training and through uh, Daytona State, they offer that on a monthly basis. Is that do I understand that correctly? Yes, yeah, so I gave you a whole bunch of information, didn't I? Yeah. So once you're hired, you have to start the DCF training hours. And, and your director or myself will help you get registered in the DCF portal. So you'll have your very own little training registry to capture all of your training hours. And it actually creates a transcript for you for all of those mandated hours. Okay, so that is only after you're hired on do you have to do that. If you're just expressing an interest right now, um, you don't have to. Um, if you want to get a jump start on those training hours, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Um, just being part of this um, opportunity once you're hired on, um, our grant allows us to support and paying for those because it ends up being um, there's five or six different modules. Um, it ends up being all together $70, I believe, is what we figured it out to be because they're like $10 and $10 and you do have to take an exam for them, um, but you'll be well prepared for that. Um, so no worries there if you have a little test anxiety, you'll be well prepared for um, for that portion of it. So that's the that's the one thing. So first you're hired on and then you create your DCF um, registry for the trainings mandated by DCF. So the other thing I talked about when I mentioned Daytona State and Flagler Tech, that's if you want to continue on beyond just the basic requirements. And by doing that, it just opens up more opportunities for you in the early learning field, um, like becoming a VPK teacher or um, like Kiki's doing is growing um, beyond the classroom into a role of a director or as she's doing a compliance specialist or even myself here at the Early Learning Coalition. Um, does, does that did that help clarify? Uh, yes, um, I, is any of the training and things, is that done in online or you have to be in person so it doesn't conflict with the working hours that you're hired, I'm assuming? Correct, yes. So the DCF training hours are all online. Um, the only thing you do have to do are the testings are in person. However, they do host those on a Saturday, so it doesn't conflict with a work schedule. And um, we're encouraging a lot of our child care providers to um, find time for you to do those trainings during your work hours. 
Um, and there's often, if you're in um, maybe not necessarily an infant classroom, but an older classroom, there might be opportunities when the children are napping. Um, if that's the process at the school you're hired at to, to do some of those trainings then as well. And they're self-paced, so you can um, go in and, and start and pause it and then go back to it as well. I have two more questions. Yeah. Uh, the other question is, um, is there a, a time uh, and uh, I guess a date that this would be limited to? Um, and also what would be the cost for the initial cost for someone like me? So the date question is a great question. We um, actually had a quicker deadline and were granted um, an extension on our timeline. Um, right now, I don't know, and I don't know, Pam, you might actually have a better answer, or it might be something I could get back to you with. Um, but right now, definitely through the summer, I think it's definitely safe to say for this particular opportunity, right? Yes, we were extended, uh, you know, the, the grant funding. Um, of course, it's going to be while, you know, funds are available. For the grant so you know we are looking to bring in a hundred new teachers to the field um so you know i i guess it would just be as, as you know first come first serve yeah and and the hope is that maybe down the road you're going to love this and you're going to want to share and you're taking advantage of this grant opportunity as well coming into the field at this moment. Um, but the supports are always there. If you're working for a contracted provider with the Early Learning Coalition, and that might be that's something you're going to want to um, ask. And, and everybody posted on our job portal are contracted with us. Um, if you were to walk, you know, just a hit like an Indeed or something, um, just be sure that it's a, a, a school readiness contract, a provider with the Early Learning Coalition um, to get these benefits that we are talking about tonight through the grant. So that's just something super important. But if you go to our job portal, um, they're all contracted providers with us. And just make sure that you let them know that um, that you came to them through this webinar and through this opportunity so that um, we make sure that we get you registered for all of those great benefits and supports. And did I answer the other one? Yeah, the other question was, what's the initial cost to, for the training and, and everything? Yes, so it should be no cost to you at this point. Your provider is going to support you in um, providing the background screen. You do have to uh, pass a level two background screen and then um, all of your trainings and your CPR first aid class are all going to be um, supported by your school that you're hired at and we're gonna reimburse your school for all of that great stuff. So the idea is there will be no initial upfront cost to you at all. Great, thank you. Yes, and thank you for your great questions. There, Because all questions, somebody else is probably thinking the same thing if you have it. Anything else? Um, I have a question. Yes. I've been in, I've done childcare on and off for the past 30 years. Um, and the last thing I did was um, licensed family child care, but I haven't done it for like probably 10 or 11 years. Um, do I have to redo like all the DCF training? Has it changed or um, how, how does that work? So we would have to pull up your transcript, Lynn. Um, you should still be in the DCF training registry portal. And when you go in, you're going to see they've made some significant updates to that in a really good way. Um, okay. So we would have to look at your transcript. I know they have updated quite a few of the trainings um, to see what you have and what you may need to update. OK, where do I even find that? I don't remember. <laughs> it's just been so long. Yeah, so it's. Um, that's a link that um, we can share with you as well. Um, okay. It was in the bottom of that one paper, Pam. I, I had sent to you, you might have to click on it to open into the web browser to poke it into the 
the chat. I'm not sure how Teams does that with copying and pasting. Um, and again, all of that information, I'll definitely do a follow up email for everybody. Okay. So make sure you're checking your email and check your spam because somehow my emails are going to spam. It's very sad. Any other questions? All right, so we're right at 730. I hope you indulge me one more moment. Um, I do have just one little ending because, you know, preschool teacher always still. Um, but I just want to um, thank you so much for your time tonight. Again, um, I've said it several times tonight, but I definitely will connect with you via email after this. Please, please reach out via email if you get stuck in the process of, um, you know, getting connected with the school. And remember, there are lots of different opportunities. So you might want to do a few different interviews to see what feels right for you and your personality and your schedule and your family and that kind of thing. Um, so don't just try one and get a little discouraged or whatever. I, I don't think you would be anyways with the first one. We work with amazing providers. Um, there, you're, you're just, I'm just so excited for you. I have goosebumps knowing that you're coming into this field with us because um, it's just so amazing. So I'm actually going to um, end with a, a goodbye, but I'm not hanging up yet because I do want to share my last slide with you all. Um, but just thank you so much for your time and we are here for you and please spread the word. Um, I'm glad you found us on social media. Share, share, share. We have another webinar scheduled for Saturday morning at nine o'clock. It's this exact same format. Um, so if you know of, you know, a cousin or a friend or a neighbor that is just not satisfied and happy with their life, it's probably because they need early learning in their life. Um, they need to be in a career that's going to make an impactful um, change on them personally, as well as our community and be a difference maker with us um, and just share on social media, share with whomever you, you can think of. And um, from my side of the computer to yours, I wish you well. And hopefully I shared my sound. Thanks all. We can't hear it, Erica. Hold on, I'm gonna stop sharing resharing and click the sound button. So just one quick second while I do all of that. Because you don't want to miss this. Sugar plum. Hold on. Eight.
Yay. Well, thank you. Have a great night, everybody. You too.